Today we're going to um, do a pencil drawing using the grid method. It's just a different method of drawing. And um, we are going to reduce it, reproduce a picture by using this method. And the objective of the lesson is to draw a value shaded textured and detailed picture. Your grids are going to help you get that end result. So you will notice in your sketchbook on page 37 that you are going to take an 8.5 by 11 full-size picture that has detail, value, and shading. Then what you are going to do is create a 1-inch grid on top of a plain white piece of tag board or poster board. You should have already drawn the grid pattern on your poster board. So today what I want to introduce to you is how do you actually use the grid? Now in drawing the grid, some of you chose to use the one inch measurements on your ruler to create the grid. Others of you chose to just, because the ruler is fairly close to being an inch, inch in width, you simply use the ruler and created your grid. The beauty of grid drawing is as long as your boxes are square and you have enough boxes as your original picture, it's going to turn out. This is a really awesome way to create a picture and enlarge it as well. Maybe starting with your picture with one inch grids, but you're drawing two inch boxes. You would then double the size of your drawing. But there are some really specific things to know when using this method. So we are going to, to get started. Now, how I will grade this assignment is, of course, I'm going to look for your exactness of drawing. I'm going to look if you've created and captured the details of your drawing. If you have value and shaded your drawing. And of course, always the degree of difficulty of your original picture. So to get started, I've chosen an original picture of a kitten inside a paper bag. First thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I have enough boxes on the, the board that I gridded as are on my original picture. So I will notice I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a partial. So Again, I'm going to look here and see. Now I notice now my partial is on this side. But you know what? That's going to work if I have to cut a little bit of the bag off. That will be fine. So I'm going to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a partial. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a partial. So by having my partial on this side, really it's not going to affect my picture at all. So I'm going to lay my board this way. Now what I'm going to look are for my boxes down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a partial. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a partial. Perfect. What people like to do for sake of confusion is they like to lightly number off and I'm going to grab a felt pen since I'm using a colored picture here. And they like to number off their boxes so they don't get confused. So they might put a number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
on their board, we're going to put a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. Now I'm going to go down. So this will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. With my pen, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So really the only place this could be a little bit tricky is with your itty bitty partial boxes. But notice, looking at my picture and looking at my boxes, I have enough boxes to match my picture. So now I'm going to use my grid. And I'm gonna show you how this works. So you can actually start anywhere on your picture you wanna start. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by getting the outside of my paper bag. So you will notice, and my screen isn't quite large enough, but you will notice that really in box one, there's some shading, but nothing drawn. Actually, all across here, there will be shading, but nothing drawn. If I'm drawing my bag, I'm gonna start in box two. Now, because I have a partial over here, that's okay. Imagine you have a partial here. So, I would start here. Looking at my line right here, looking at my line right here, I'm just gonna put a little, a little dot. Then I'm gonna to go to this line. I know that it's a little bit higher than halfway. I'm gonna put a little dot. Now I'm gonna go between three and four, between three and four. This line here, it's about right in the middle of my box. Now I'm going to go four and five, four and five. I notice that if I were to split that line, it's a little bit lower here. Five and six, oh, something happens in there. So if I go to five and six, notice that my bag stops a little bit lower, and now it creates a line that makes a triangle in the second box down of row six. So I second box down of row six, and it creates a triangle. So I'm just gonna put that line in there. Now, I'm going to lightly with my pencil, sketch, and notice right here, it takes a turn. My bag takes a turn. Now you may say, wow, that looks really rough. Surely, the reason for my grid is to help me with my basic drawing. It, and so, I could start here at the edge, but another thing I could do is I could decide that I want to start right here with the kitten's face. What I would do then, say I wanted to start with this eye. I would go one, two, three, four, five, row six, one, two, three, four, five. So row six and down five. In this box right here is where I will start with the kitten's eye. What I like to do is I like to take another piece of paper and I like to simply make a little window here because what that does is it kind of blocks out some of my other distraction and it helps me analyze just this box, especially if you have a really busy, busy box. So in doing this box, I notice that this little cheek line, okay, so again, I was six over, one, two, three, four, five, six over, and I was in row five. So in here, I may start with 
the little cheek of my kitten. And again, my whole reason for using this grid method is to give me a basic contour line drawing. Maybe I want to start with this eye. And looking at the eye, you might think, well, that is a circle, an eye circle. But note, the eye is not a circle. The eye is actually an oval. And again, I want to draw exactly what I see, not what my brain tells me. So notice that this oval right here, come up to this line, analyze the box, it comes higher than the middle. It comes up to this line of my box, which is about in the middle. So I get my eye. Now I see this oval here. And I get the ovaling. I have another line that comes here. And I have a shade that goes there. Notice this, this cat, how do you draw white whiskers? Well, in the situation of white whiskers, I'm going to wait till the very, very end and actually use the eraser of a mechanical drawing pencil, and I'm going to erase the shading to get my white whiskers. So I will use this method to do everything in that box. I think this box helps analyze what's going to go in this box. I could then use this method and go like this to my next box. But again, I can also not use the box and simply analyze where lines hit and connect the dots after I showed you, like I showed you in the very beginning, the outer shape of the bag. Here are the key points to remember. Use your grid lines to get you your contour line drawing of your picture. Very, very important. It will really help. Trust the boxes. You may want to build just out of a piece of paper, a little, I call it a peep window, that helps you analyze the box. It, of course, doesn't need to be yellow or of any sort of color. You could build it just out of plain white paper. Your whole goal is to block out the other stuff to take away the distraction. So after you have your line drawing done, here is what is extremely important about this process. We get really tempted to start shading right away. We want to shade our drawing. But that is going to cause you problems in the end. Use your boxes to get your basic line drawing done and then begin to erase your boxes, then shade. So notice in your sketchbook where I've written out instructions and the order of doing this assignment. I've talked a lot about step four, using the grid by drawing a line drawing, capturing all the lines, the shapes, and details of your original picture. But notice this key piece of information. You're going to erase the grid lines then begin to value and shade and texture your picture. This here is a key step because if you don't erase the lines and you do all the shading and all the detailing, 
and you get completely finished and you notice, oh no, it looks like I have a picture drawn with all boxes in it. Now some of the boxes will get swallowed up with the shading, as in maybe some of my dark areas, but not all of them will. And then if you go to erase after you have shaded, you're going to end up with a whole lot of now erase box lines and you're going to have to go back into your picture and shade it again. So again, follow the process. You've already gridded off your board. Your picture is gridded. You're going to use your grid lines to capture your basic lines of your picture. Then you are going to erase. Then you are going to shade. A great method to use when you want to capture a picture of, or basically reproduce a picture. This method is super handy. Let's say you have a picture that is gridded off in one inches and you want this picture double in size. You would do all of the exact same thing that I've just taught, but on your grid boxes, if these are one inch and you want the picture double, you would make your boxes two inches. Great way to also enlarge a picture. 